Hey folks, uh, today I want to show you the one chart, the one ratio, the one indicator if you wish that I am watching very closely for uh, when I would expect the NASDAQ 100, specifically the NASDAQ 100, it's the QQQ ETF, to start underperforming uh, other risk uh, asset classes. Um, we all know, of course, what the rally has looked like in the NASDAQ 100. It's gone largely from the bottom left to the upper right. Uh, we know the names, we know the culprits, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, all tremendous companies in the role in individual doings. Uh, the question, of course, is what does happens to those stocks uh, as inflation starts to kick in more? Um, as as a result, interest rates start to rise, or vice versa. Really, it's the interest rates go up before uh, go up because of interest rate uh, inflation. Uh, as growth accelerates, uh, and as multiples essentially have to start coming down because of the uh, discounting mechanism, forward discounting mechanism of interest rates of higher interest rates. And so, one thing I'm looking at very closely is not just what these charts, these Nasdaq 100 stocks. This ETF, particularly the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, or if you want to look at the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100 index, uh, what they're doing in, its, in their own right. Remember, the most important thing about the markets is what happens at the margin, relatively. What happens in one asset class versus another. Because investors have a choice. They don't have to buy the NASDAQ 100. They can buy something else, whatever that is. And so one way of looking at things is uh, looking at what happens to these stocks as inflation starts to accelerate, or at least the specter or the threat, the real threat of inflation, which we're, as we're recording this here right now in late February 2021, is certainly happening, something we've been talking about and warning our clients for, for the better part of the past couple of quarters. So if you look at the NASDAQ 100, you can see the big vertical rally. If you look at commodities, though, DJP is the ETF I'm going to choose for this thing, the commodities complex, DJP, uh, has essentially been in a bear market uh, for many, many years, but it's been basing uh, now for, I'm going to call it for the better part of the past six years, five to six years. Now, this is interesting in its own right, but what happens if you take those two charts together and paint a picture that is so powerful? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, new, the NASDAQ 100 uh, and divide it by the commodities complex. And this creates what I think is the most fascinating, the most important chart out there. You can see that in relative terms, the NASDAQ 100 has been outperforming dramatically, dramatically the commodity space. Uh, interest rates have gone lower. Uh, inflation hasn't really been a big threat. The Fed continues to, to, to sort of try to get to a 2% inflation target, don't seem to be able to get there. Uh, but what happens if that starts to accelerate? And you can see that as of right now, this is now a monthly chart. We're going to go into a weekly chart and then a daily chart to give you the different time frames. You can start to see that this, uh, and I, I, can, I only have the data going back to 2006, so that's, let's call it 15 years of data. Uh, for the past 15 years, the NASDAQ 100 has been eating the lunch of commodities. Uh, in fact, it may be, let, let, let's call it the, the start in 2008. So that's still 12, 13 years. It's a long, a long relative bull market in the NASDAQ 100 versus uh, commodities. So you can start to see that we are breaking this ratio down, meaning the NASDAQ 100 is starting to underperform commodities. You can see this here in a monthly chart. We, we have a very defined line in the sand. For the most part, this ratio has been basing uh, for the past year and a half, meaning the NASDAQ 100 has not been able to go higher and make a new higher high versus commodities for the past year and a half. But, or the past, sorry, the past uh, uh, eight so or so months or so or thereabouts. Now, if you look at the weekly chart and then ultimately the daily chart, this becomes more and more powerful. And this is now more the optics of it, the simple, you know, uh, the simple sort of um, uh, charting stuff of it. But you can see that we're starting to break down. This is now the weekly chart. And you can see how we've been basing and basing and basing. And in relative terms, the NASDAQ has not been able to advance. In fact, has actually now underperformed commodities for a, a, a few months. 
And finally, you go into the daily chart. And anyone, any of you who ever looked at a chart, whether that's a, a day trading chart or a swing trading chart or anything that you might be doing, you can see that you might be able to assign, and I'm going to take my powerful <laughs> curve that I like to draw that people seem to love so much, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to do it like this, actually, you know. And you can see that this is more and more looking like it might be some sort of a top where we might see a breakdown in this ratio, which of course means that the numerator is going to underperform the denominator, meaning the numerator, numerator being the NASDAQ 100 is going to underperform the denominator uh, commodities. So I think one of the greatest trades out there that is setting up right here, right now, as we're talking in late February 2021, uh, is going to be basically underweight NASDAQ 100 versus long inflation hedges such as commodity uh, commodities. I don't expect that to be a short-term trade for the next week or month. I expect this to be a theme that's going to play out over the course uh, of probably multiple years. The one thing I want to do mention quickly just to wrap up this video is that this is not to say that we expect these companies in the NASDAQ 100 or tech in general to be completely falling apart. That's not what this is. This is a relative value play. And the question you have to ask yourself you know, is it really going to happen that Apple will continue to outperform and double or triple over the next couple of years, uh, which it has, of course, in the past, is that going to happen going forward? I think the odds of that are basically zero. So there's going to be other opportunities, other areas, maybe other parts of the stock market. I want to bring this attention to you that if these mega cap tech stocks stop doubling and tripling over the next couple of years, the, not only does the, does the tech sector as an index, right, not in individual pockets, as an index, because of the heavily weighted, uh, 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 heavily weighted nature of these mega cap stocks, is going to have basically an impossible task to go much higher, but it's going to also broadly weigh on the general indices, because tech is such a big, heavy, important part of the world, uh, of the indices. So again, this is not about being bearish on tech. This is about understanding that the relative strength of tech, uh, particularly of the mega cap names, has likely come to an end. Hope this makes sense. Leave us a, a questions or comments if you have anything. Thumbs up, like, and we'll see you soon.